In chapter one, we talked about the pursuit of this one great thing, which is really a myth, that, that God hasn't called you to one great thing, but to many callings. Last chapter, we talked about how it's easy to get trapped in the past. Think about the, the golden days, right, the glory days, uh, or to, to think too much about the future, uh, a time and place where we have no control over, but to truly be present. Today, we talk about diapers and sippy cups. God is, is often most at work in the ordinary, everyday things of life, rather than the extraordinary. He's certainly there, but most of our callings are found in the little tasks we do each day out of love. Take a listen as Pastor Leininger and I talk about chapter three. All right, chapter three is a, is a good one. This is a, this is a good one for us. It's diapers and sippy cups. It's quite a unique chapter title, uh, right? It grabs the attention right away. How, how long has it been for you since you've had to deal with diapers and sippy cups? I actually literally remember the last diaper I changed. Oh, yeah? Because I, re I remember thinking, wait, I think this is going to be the last one. I should remember that this is, yeah, I was a, I'm a very involved dad, was a very involved dad. Um, and, but it's been about, uh, let's see, our son is 11. So it's been about a year. No, just kidding. <laughs> it's been eight or nine, 10 years since we, I've changed a diaper, but man, I, I did my share. Yeah. Any fun stories that you can recall that involve diapers or sippy cups that you, uh, that you can share? The, uh, the diaper is I, I, I uh, perfected the hold down it both both hands and then with your leg hold down both legs and then you got one free arm to change the diaper so i, I perfected that and i think i got like a a nine for um for uh freestyle on that yeah, as as parents especially with infants you realize you don't need all your arms and your legs to do stuff you need a <laughs> pinky to open the door and to hold bags and you're you're manhandling things and uh yeah uh, we're quite ambidextrous. I've got plenty of stories with my own kids, but um, the funniest story involving a diaper was my youngest brother was, he was born when I was like in seventh or eighth grade. So uh, I remember changing his diaper. And of course, I don't think the, the PPTP had been invented yet. And, uh, and nor did I garner any sort of protection. And I got a, I got a shower that day I didn't expect. <laughs> so those are, those are fun days, right? Uh, when you're in them, they're difficult when you look back. Like we said, perhaps in, in the previous chapter, we kind of only remember the fun golden mm -hmm. moment, but but maybe we need to bring it back. There's more we can learn about from diapers and sippy cups that, yeah. that still apply to us today. And, and I really do appreciate this chapter because I think it's real. It, it's it, We're going to start getting into more reality, of course, and not fantasy because diapers and sippy cups remind us that there is there is monotonous, dirty, yeah. not glamorous work to be done. That's important. There are sacred and divine things in the everyday that we do yeah. that aren't glamorous, but but they're important. And, and I think we see glamorous. We see glory portrayed everywhere. Billboards, magazines, mm -hmm. Hollywood. We, we see yeah. life portrayed in this glamorous way. And, and I think that plays into the myth of this one great thing, that there's, yeah. there's something better out there for you that you're always working toward, but even in our own lives, I think we, we try to portray our lives uh, as glamorous and as put together as possible. Classic example, someone says, how you doing? And, and the standard answer is like, I'm doing good. Yeah. I'm like, are you really doing good? <laughs> probably not. There's probably a lot you could go into, but either we don't want people to know, or we've got better things to do. We don't want to take the time to talk. Yeah. Even more so now with our social media, we, we portray our lives as glamorous, put together, um, no problems. I'm just gonna, I'm gonna give you the highlight reel. Why, why do you think we as people want to exchange the mundane reality of life for a fictitious, glamorous fantasy? You know, our callings, as I, I mentioned in this chapter, are found more often in the ordinary rather than the extraordinary. And, um, it's this is a very very much stems from um, Martin Luther the the German reformers um, theology and and uh, wonderful teachings you know, we just uh, we we just want we want to do great things and that's a good thing of course you want to do great things for God but we have to we have to reimagine what does it mean to do a great thing changing that diaper 
um, feeding that child, babysitting uh, those, those children, that is actually a great thing. I think of this chapter, I thought a lot of my own wife uh, and very uh, many very capable uh, women who are smart and career driven and had had a lot of things in front of them, but have taken a pause in their lives or um, maybe a cul-de-sac in their lives to raise their children. And many of them feel, uh, what am I doing? They feel almost embarrassed. They, you know, they go, they maybe go to a high school reunion or they'll avoid going to a high school reunion because somebody said, what have you been doing? I've been changing diapers. Yeah. And it, it's, it's, to me, it's, it's, I understand why they, they might feel that way, but it's, it's just really a, a false view of, of vocations and callings. Yeah, I think, uh, I think it, you often, I'll, I'll describe it this way. You, you, we, we put a negative qualifier on it. Like, for example, if I go to a restaurant and I order water, I usually say, I'll, I'll just have a water, as if water isn't a good choice yeah. um, or a healthy choice. Or we'll say, I think we mentioned this before too, say, well, I'm, I'm just a mom. Like, just a mom, right? We don't need to, that's a negative qualifier. No, yeah. I'm, a, I'm a mother, I'm a father. Yeah. Like this is, this is, this is one of the, the, the callings that, that God has placed me in. And this is a glorious thing. Yeah. It's difficult, it's, yeah. it's not glamorous, yeah. but it is important, essential and worth celebrating and, and yeah. receiving. And um, Martin Luther's um, time, um, parenthood and motherhood was very much considered less than. Um, the highest thing you could do would be escape away from the ordinary, mm -hmm. uh, go into a, a monastic institution, spend all your time in prayer, removed from the world. So escaping from the world was how you got closer to God. Got it. And and so this chapter, based on Martin Luther's insights, is say, wait, wait, no, no, it's just the opposite. Like, what, where, where does God want you to be in life? If, if a living sacrifice, we we know from the scriptures from from the book of Hebrews, it's not only that we're alive, but it's happening in life. Mm -hmm. And so we've got to we've got to not retreat from the world, but we've got to engage or attack in a sense back into the world. And that happens in very ordinary, everyday things. Um, so for us to open up our hearts and minds and our eyes to see God is at work through me, changing these diapers, um, delivering the mail, um, doing the dishes, uh, playing with my kids, that that's actually, he is actually at work through that. You don't have to escape away from that in order to serve God. Yeah. And I think, um, I've seen also, I mentioned, you know, social media, but I, there is a trend and I hope it actually grows. It, it could, it could actually become, could become, you know, too much on the other extreme too, but where people now aren't afraid to show flaws, right? Here's, right, yeah. here's our family Christmas picture that didn't go well, you know, <laughs> Merry Christmas, everybody, or, or ad campaigns that, that don't have the stereotypical, you know, mm -hmm. ideal model. It's, it's showing people as they are. And, mm -hmm. And I think that's important. Now, again, I think that could go to the extreme. We could start yeah. worship that too, but I think I think it's important for us to realize that that God is grounded in in real life, yeah. uh, and that's that's evidence. We have evidence of that in His Son now coming yes. out of Christmas. You know that God chose to put on flesh, he chose to become a part of His creation, and then experience what we experience in this life. Uh, I often sometimes try to. Um, not really play a trick, but I, I asked this question about um, to people, if I were to ask you to look in the direction of where you think God is, where would you look? So I ask everyone to look. And most often people look up, right? God's up. <laughs> and uh, the evidence we have of, of where God locates himself is just the opposite, right? Christ locates himself below us <laughs> in the dirt, yeah. in, in reality, as a servant. Uh, and so if you really want to find God, don't look, up, don't look up, look down, look underneath your feet, because that's where God has placed himself so that he might serve you. Um, and I, then that's a cue for us to realize, okay, I need to get in the dirt too. And, and if God, if, if the dirt's good enough for God to play in, uh, it's good enough for me to play in too, and, and really love people where they're at.
That, that's a great kind of segue from, I, I think chapter three and chapter four are very similar in that way. Um, chapter three, diapers and sippy cups, cups is that our callings are found in the ordinary rather than the extraordinary. In chapter four, God loves dirt is that our, our callings are found in the this worldly rather than the otherworldly. Yeah. And that's a very similar theme, exactly as you said, is there's this tendency in Christianity and, and in the world that we escape from, the, we do higher things, are closer to God, right? Um, but think about the Bible itself. God created man by forming with the dust, with his hands, breathing life into him. Jesus came down into this earthly existence. Jesus ate. Jesus slept. He did everything that human beings do without sin. Um, if if we're supposed to really ascend out of this world in order to serve God, why did why did God come down into our world? Right. We so um, God loves dirt is the idea that the, the creation, though fallen, has now been redeemed precisely because God Himself became a human being for us. And it's a it's been a trap throughout the history of Christianity. And in, in in chapter four of the book, I talk about the different ways that that this this heretical actually understanding has has come throughout Christianity, this idea that in order to serve God, in order to get closer to God, you leave this world. And it's just not true. I wanted to, um, as I was reading through chapter three, uh, diapers and sippy cups reminded me of, of a book I, I recently purchased. Uh, and at first I, I thought, this is going to be great. It's a, it's a book called Every Moment Holy. Have you ever heard of this book? I've not heard of that book. I wish that I had. I would have maybe included some of it in my book. Yeah, well, maybe when you come out with chapter or uh, version two, you know, it's a, you could reference. The revised standard version of my of Callings for Life. Yeah, it's it's fairly new, 2019, and it's um, written by Douglas McKelvey. I saw this, someone posted this and read something out of it. I'm like, oh, I'm going to get that and check it out. As I as I initially thumbed through it, I thought, oh, this is this is hokey. All right, this is a uh, this is just silly. But then I started reading it. I really started to appreciate it and 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 find value in what it was saying. So I wanted to, if you don't mind, um, because diapers and sippy cups reminded me of this one that I read. There's there's in here. It's included. It's um, a liturgy for changing diapers. Now, one. <laughs> so there's a there's a second liturgy for changing diapers. But I'm gonna well, read. There's lots of diapers to change, Pastor. So you need several liturgies. I'm gonna I'm gonna read this for you. And, and now I kind of struggle to actually read it without tearing up a little bit. So forgive me if, if that happens, but it's, I think it's something that we all need to hear. Uh, I think it's beautifully written. So this is a liturgy for changing diapers one. <laughs> uh, under labor and vocation is the, the heading. Heavenly Father, in such menial moments as this, the changing of a diaper, I would remember this truth. My unseen labors are not lost. For it is these repeated acts of small sacrifice that, like bright, ragged patches, are slowly being sewn into a quilt of loving kindness that swaddles this child. I'm not just changing a diaper. By love and service, I am tending a budding heart that, rooted early in such grace-filled devotion, might one day be more readily inclined to bow to your compassionate conviction knowing itself then as both a receptacle and a reservoir of heavenly grace. So this little act of diapering, though in form sometimes felt as base drudgery, might be better described as one of 10,000 acts by which I am actively creating a culture of compassionate service and selfless love to shape the life of this family and this beloved child. So take this unremarkable act of necessary service, O Christ, and in your economy, let it be multiplied into that great outer working of worship and faith, a true investment of the incremental advance of your kingdom across generations. Open my eyes that I might see this act for what it is, from the fixed vantage of eternity, O Lord, how the changing of a diaper might sit upstream of the changing of a heart, how the changing of a heart might sit upstream of the changing of the world. Amen. Wow. That is really beautiful. I'm holding them back. I'm holding them back. Oh man, that is that is really beautiful. It's really and 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 this book is filled with these um, 
and that thing is that's the thing every moment holy i think it plays yeah. right into this idea that yes. that these these yeah. mundane and seemingly menial certainly not glamorous things are things by which god is up to something god is up to something bigger yeah. that we can see it's not up to us to do the big thing it's it's to allow god to do big things through the little things he's given us to do yeah um so a great little resource um wonderful yeah. it reminds me pastor of uh in, in in chapter three of this book, I um, there's a, a kind of fictional episode about a mom who's feeling pretty discouraged because she's just changing diapers, uh, and she gets a letter from God. In the end, that we find out it's her husband that wrote it to her. Yeah. Um, but that's the one where people uh, I I hear a lot from moms that say that really touched me. It's just a reminder that this is sacred and important and God is at work through you, even though the world doesn't judge it as very valuable, but yet God does. Yeah. I, I think, I think again, that's the power of the incarnation that, that God chose to enter into the exact same space we are and do and experience the things we experience, not to, not to put us down or to necessarily show us how it's done to do it right, but to redeem those things, right. And, and show the, the glory of God through them. So it's a wonderful, a wonderful thing the, the mystery of the incarnation is, is I mean, amazing. It's so, amazing, yeah. Oh my goodness. <laughs>